So as you can see, these are my two babies, my Alienware Area 51 R2s. And uh, I love, again, I've already said this, so I'm not gonna bother beating dead horse. I love these computers. They're beautiful, especially like, you know, they're absolutely lovely. I mean, look at these cases. The, the case designs are off the hook. They're beautiful, I love them. And the mouse and the keyboard look great. Now, um, cryptocurrency mining, I'm going to be making a number of videos talking about mining cryptocurrency, basically focusing on efficiency and everything. And I know what you're saying. You're like, oh, well, wait a minute. Why would you mine cryptocurrency at your house? What about your electricity bill? To which point I would reply, no, you're absolutely right. Cryptocurrency mining is extraordinarily expensive when it comes to electricity and you're trying to break even. But my beauty, my plan is just brilliant. What I do is I take these things to my office, plug them in there after I reconfigure them. And once you plug them in there, you're no longer paying for the electricity. So I have the whole electric problem beat. Now, in addition to the alien wares, I also obviously have this old, uh, the um, internet, I, I used to call it the internet hate machine, the envy. This is where I do all my trolling and uh, hooked up to these three monitors right here. But see, ultimately what I'm ultimately going to do is just basically upgrade everything as soon as uh, NVIDIA releases their brand new GTX series this year. So I'm planning to upgrade just about everything. And um, that's okay, that. so this is episode two of my, um, how should I say, my uh, Area 51 uh, build uh, for coin mining and video gaming and whatnot. So before I get going, I just want to uh, talk just a little bit about right now the current situation. Um, some people might say that and you'd be right that right now is the absolute worst possible time that you could possibly be building a gaming computer or even a coin miner. And you'd be absolutely right. So, for instance, let's just take a look at the um, equipment uh, cost that you'd be paying if you were to buy these things right now. Now, first of all, you have right here starting cost of a Dell Area 51 Alienware. Is seventeen ninety nine, and that's like a hundred bucks off. Um, I was uh, told in email that there was a sale since I'm a previous customer. As you know, I bought one of the laptops, the seventeen with the GTX ten eighty. Great laptop, basically can run anything on the entire market, and it's VR ready. And uh, right now, as you can see, you get a Core i seven seven thousand eight hundred X. You get. Um, what is this, 8 gigabytes of uh, DDR4, which is actually low in my opinion. I think you shouldn't have anything less than 16 gigabytes. Fortunately, if you take 150 bucks and throw that at it, you can go to like Micro Center and you can get yourself an extra um, chip of 8 gigabyte memory and then you can upgrade to 16. The GTX 1050 Ti is what's included with the base model. And the GTX 1050 Ti is basically an entry gaming uh gpu now in order for you to have true virtual reality equipment ready um gpu you'd have to get the gtx 1060 but me personally i'd recommend nothing less than a 1070 or a 1080 this way not only can you use your virtual reality equipment but you can also game in 4k now as you can see the price of these things goes up astronomically so basically, you add uh, up to twenty one ninety nine. You get the same processor, only now they bump your video card up to a ten seventy, and they also bump your memory up. But your memory should only be like one hundred and fifty dollars, something less than you know less than two hundred dollars. So basically, if these are the only things that they're bumping up, part of the reason why it's so much more expensive is mostly because of the video card. That's a ten seventy. Now you go up to twenty five ninety nine. Now you're looking at the GTX ten eighty. And you still only have 16 gigabytes of memory. Now, me personally, I run nothing less than 32 gigabytes. Some people would probably say, and they'd be right, that you don't really need more than 32 gigabytes. Uh, in fact, some people would probably say you don't need more than 16. Now, the thing about it is, you know, no, there's no kill like overkill. So as far as I'm concerned, um, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 is where I basically start and stop. It's like, I'll go up from there 
but the problem right now is that memory is extremely expensive. Like if you're buying RAM, right now 32 gigabytes of RAM actually costs more than one of these processors right here. The, these processors like the uh, 7800, the 7700, these processors, you can get them for like less than $300. You can get a G, uh, what is it, a Core i7-8700 and you can get that less than the cost of 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So once again, right now is a really bad time to be building a gaming PC if you're trying to build on a budget, especially when it comes to these chassis. These chassis, Dell charges, um, they charge basically a premium on these chassis. They have a cheaper one, the Aurora, but I don't like that because I like to roll with the bigger chassis. I love it. Now, I'm absolutely not a fan of AMD. I buy Intel, I buy Nvidia, but I don't buy AMD anything. The Threadrippers, which are the newer processor that came to market within this past year and started skyrocketing in cost due to cryptocurrency mining. The uh, Threadripper editions, when you test them, if you test a top of the line Threadripper side by side against the top of the line Intel Core i9, it absolutely loses. Now, some people like AMD, I absolutely don't. Part of the reason why they like AMD is because they can buy three of the AMD video cards relatively cheap when you compare that to the cost of an NVIDIA card. So basically, three of the top-of-the-line AMD Vega 64s or whatnot are going to cost still way less than if you were to buy three 1080 Ti's. Now, anybody who builds computers knows what I'm talking about. So the equipment that I have, you'll recognize right away as I um, continue my build videos. And this is just the second episode, so I've got some more episodes coming because once my uh, once my uh, complete setup is beautiful, it's like that's when you know you'll be able to see how I mine my coin cryptocurrency, and then you'll be able to see how I play my games. And I'm gonna get back to streaming videos eventually from gaming videos because you know I wanted to do that before I got the Elgato, but the thing about it is because I have a business, it's like I'm so busy and whatnot. I just didn't have a chance to do it. So anyway, this thing starts. 2099 they're giving you GTX 1050 Ti's and that thing is still $2000 two, well 2100 and it was marked down 100 bucks um a lot of people criticize Dell and they criticize the Alienware brand because even though these are really the most probably the best looking chassis that you can get unless you're buying those glass cases with water cooling in them as far as I'm concerned, these are really the best looking chassis you can get. I'm not that much of a fan of the glass cases. Now, if they come back and they make the panels on the side of this thing out of glass, oh, I'd really like that. In fact, I'd really like it if they'd make the entire panel so that you could take it off and make it modular. And if they made this panel out of like a dark smoke glass and then they had like those three LEDs in it, oh, I really would like that. I'd definitely like to buy that for my computer to upgrade it. But anyway, the top of the line one of these things well, which you, you can upgrade these things as much as you want. You can get like a four terabyte SSD. You can get 64 gigabytes of RAM, whatever you want. But you're talking about close to $8,000. Now, if you buy it like this, you're talking about like less than $4,000, $35,79 and whatnot. Me personally, I'm just not into AMD's Risen processors. As far as I've seen, my Core i9 and my GTX card have better thermal management and they have um, far more performance. And every single uh, comparison that you look at that they've done um, graphing for, you, you'd, you'd find that right out. If you take a look yourself, you can look yourself and you can tell me I'm wrong because I'm not. But the GTX Titan XP versus anything from the AMD line wins in just about every circumstance. Now, I'm also interested in what's coming this year as far as the newer version of the GTX cards. Like, I don't know if they're going to call them the 20 series or if they're going to call them the 11 series. Like, if you're going to have an 1180 Ti or a 2080 Ti, I'm really interested in getting my hands on that. But um, that's going to be a while. You're probably not going to see that till May. So for right now, um, basically, this is what I'm dealing with.